At this point, we become quite familiar with the directions of electrostatic forces. That is, like charges repel each other, and unlike charges attract. Okay, we can determine the direction of electrostatic forces, but what about the magnitude of these forces? Now, in order to determine the magnitude of the forces, we use Coulomb's law, named after Charles Coulomb. F equals K, a new constant, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And it might look a little complicated off the bat, but a really easy way to get a feel for this equation is to compare it with our familiar Newton's equation for gravitational forces. It is amazing at how similar they are. In the gravitational force equation, we have masses involved, m1 and m2, the mass of each object involved. In the electrostatic force equation, or Coulomb's law, instead of masses, we have charges, the charge of each object involved. On the bottom of each, we have the distance between the centers of mass, r, and this is squared. The force is inversely proportional to the distance squared for both of these situations. And then we have the constant out front. For gravitational forces, the constant we call g. For electrostatic forces, we call the constant k. Now if we look at these constants, the electrostatic constant k is a huge number, while the gravitational constant g is a very, very small number. So what does this tell us about these forces? Well, you need a lot of mass to make a gravitational force significant. But it doesn't take a lot of charge in coulombs to make a strong electrostatic force. Now certainly, this amazing similarity has not gone unnoticed by physicists. In fact, Einstein spent a fair bit of time on this while working on his theory of general relativity and coined the term unified field theory, which is still inconclusive and wide open for discovery, perhaps by you in the future. Given all this, let's overview the main points here. Gravitational and electrostatic forces have very similar equations for determining magnitude. With gravitational forces, we look at the masses of the objects, while for electrostatic forces, we look at the charges of these objects. In both cases, the forces decrease as the distance between the objects increase, and they drop quickly as they are inversely related to the distance squared. Now, when it comes to the direction of forces, we find a significant difference here. With gravitational forces, it's always an attractive force. Well, for electrostatic forces, they can either be attractive or repulsive, depending on the objects involved. 